thank God for everything he's done. Would you please help me welcome my pastor as she comes. Give her a hearty amen as she comes to bring the word of God. Oh, it's good to be here. Yes, the Lord is good. Continues to bless his people again and again. We, I don't know what we do without him. I'm glad I don't have to try to find out. It works with him. We're so happy for all of you that are here this morning. Especially welcome to all of our visitors. We're glad that you came. God is always in the blessing business. If you need a touch from God, he will do it. Whatever it is, whatever your need is, he is at the point of that need. To touch your life, to minister to you as only he can. We're so glad for every visitor. We hope that you enjoy the service this morning and have an open heart and mind to receive from the Lord. If you have your Bible, start with me to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Father, we're grateful today for your blessings. You've been so good and so kind. Nobody but nobody ever loved us like you. We thank you for Calvary, for the shed blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, for a mind that want to do it right. We thank you because you walk with us every day, taking us through one situation after another, and you never fail. I pray, God, for the anointing upon your servant, for without you, I can do nothing with you. I can do anything. I pray, God, for every person in this building that they will hear your word this morning, apply it to their hearts, and say to themselves, I need to make a change. We thank you, God, for all that you've done, and we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The fourth verse says, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watereth, but God giveth the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. I want to preach to you a little bit this morning. As I thought on this scripture, it's such a timely message because of all that's going on in our country right now. And I thought, we are so divided and messed up. And you know what? It didn't take this election to tell us that. Before this, we already knew that. But I was thinking as I looked at the situation, I was thinking about the same thing happened in the church with, with Paul and Apollos. Now, you got a group of people over here saying, I'm a Paul, and another one over here, I'm a Paul, and I, 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 I'm with him. That does nothing but bring a division. When Paul recognized what they was doing, he said, who is Paul? Why are you focused on us? If anything good is happening in this world, it is happening because God did it, not you. To God to do this. So as I look at that, and I'm, I think we uh, uh, too many times want to have the praise and the honor given to us rather than to give it to God. But if you really understand who you are, that you are nothing, for sure. Not many people go there. They try to fix it every kind of way to make it look like I'm doing something great. You're not doing anything without God. Because he's plainly told us, without me, you can do nothing. You can't do anything. So, you see the divide. It is a tragedy. When it's in the secular world, but it's even a greater tra tragedy in the church. You would expect to go to the church and say, okay, um, Everything here is good. People love each other. Nobody's divided against each other. And, and we get along together and all that good stuff. And it should be that way in the church. But you know what? It works me over time to be sure that people don't hook up in this church and, and, and have a click. Yeah. When the clicks are, we all, we, we think the same. We friends, we buddies. But it ends up costing somebody some pain. 
somebody some disappointment because if something is said and this is your little friend over here, if it ain't just right, then, you know, we give each other the eye, yeah, mm -hmm. horrible thing. I used to see it when I was in school. I always despised it. That people would get together and they would lie to each other and, and, they, and this little group would be over here and one over there and it just, it was a mess. Anytime we start getting things separated, dividing, it loses strength. It loses power. And so I thought about that. I thought, God, help your people in the church to come together, to love each other, regardless of race, regardless of whatever else that might make us different. We got to love each other. Yes. As I looked at this thing, I thought, you know what? I would never make it as a politician. I would never make it. You'd have to be a good liar. The better liar you are, the more likely you are to win. So I wouldn't make it. I, I watched and observed, but then I've come back to the church and say, that's what happens in the church. Preachers have picks. Preachers have so a certain amount of people in the church that uh, he'll let get by with this. How my girls doing? Good to see y'all. And so think about it. So when you look around and say, nothing is worse than when a preacher has a pick or a certain person they like better than you. That always puts you in a position that you don't know whether or not what you say matters because he's kind of hooked up with them. First thing we could do is hook up. I have a preacher do that. And they do it every day. I was called into a counseling session in Oklahoma. And the pastor, I was the only black. Everybody else was white. And boy, he said, I had to do this, Sister Rose, because these people have been members here for 30 years. But what makes them right and me wrong? Right and wrong, don't care how long you've been there, you can either right or you're wrong. So, when I look at the whole political structure, and I watched quite a bit of it this time because we had a crazy one in, uh, going on, so I watched a lot of it. And so, but you know what shocked me? Was the fact, you better believe this, when this election went off, Donald Trump got it because the people that were with him were Donald Trump. That's true. I like him. And said, if he don't win, we're going to cause some problems. Well, that wouldn't have quite went over, but when, whoever you see, my grandma used to say a saying, are the birds of a feather flock together? It's so true, they are like they stay together. And so, as I observed all this stuff, I observed the lying. It was phenomenal. Who in the world can you believe? Nobody. I look at the ones running against the people in, in the Republican Party, and one minute you're no good, you're a liar, you're this and you're that, and then if I win, he's a good man. Are you kidding me? This is so unbelievable. I just sat there and watched and thought, I mean, you done dropped out of the race. You done said he's no good. Mitt Romney comes out and says he's a crook and all this stuff. He talks about him like a dog. He goes back in, but yes, the other day he, could, he called him on the phone and congratulated him. See, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I couldn't congratulate you on something wrong. Because really, in actuality, I don't, I'm not really glad that you won. So what am I congratulating for? So people start lying. Pick up the phone. Jeb Bush called and congratulated. You're the one said he was bad for the country. <laughs> then he needs, you need to congratulate him? Something's wrong with that picture. See, the way God does things is so straight and so right on point. He's not going to give you something you don't deserve. He's not going to bless you when you're doing wrong things. He's not going to say, well, you know, this is my little child over here that I love a lot and I'm going to try to stay with him, but you're going to pay for yours. No, come on, let's do it right. Let's not have that type of division in the church of God to allow us to be divided one against the other and, and black and white and, and male and female. We need to love each other. We need to do that. So Paul said this thing is not good. You're carnal minded. 
You're carnal. This is not what's going on. This is not what we should be thinking. Sometimes we get less things done in the church because the person, everybody wants to be said that I did it. It's not important. So we say, well, she didn't call my name. Why is that important? If you only did it to get your name called, you should have never did it. And this goes on a lot in the church. It's a tragedy. But I said, God, and so Paul said, this is portyism in the church. This is what we got going on here. This is a tragedy. You're over here with Paul. You say, I'm Paul, and I'm Apollos, and and we're split right down the middle. You know what? We're going to always have a divided country until we get rid of the aisle that goes down the middle. You're on this side of the aisle, you, you agree. You're on this side of the aisle, you agree. Have you ever watched the State of the Union speeches and, and, and the Democrats on one side, the Republicans on another side? And when the, and whoever's talking, be it Obama, whoever, it's Obama now with, at the State of the Union, but uh, if they don't like what you say, all the Republicans, all the Democrats already, already done made it, uh, come into an agreement. So you see these people just clapping and clapping and clapping. But on this side, you see people looking like this. Sometimes even, even, even uh, 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 the person sitting with the vice president, what does he need? Speak of the house. He don't clap either. We're all looking at you. You're supposed to be our leaders. You're supposed to be the people that help run the country right. But there's the speaker of the house. He ain't clapping either because he's Republican. And the Republicans ain't, ain't, ain't clapping because we're Republicans. And it could be good. But we ain't letting you get the credit for it. We ain't going to stand with you. And the Democrats do exactly the same. You'll see some of them standing up and clapping and clapping. Look on the other side. Nobody's doing it. Every now and then you may see a few people over there who will stand up or whatever. But for the most part, we're not together. Do you know why there is little being accomplished in, in Washington? Basically because we're divided. What I found out, because we made a lot of trips to Washington, so we learned a lot in the process. I'll help you if you are part of, of the Republican Party or are you a part of this. There is few things done on the Hill that is bipartisan. Few things. Now, I think it's great that they are saying they come together for prison reform because we truly need that. And you've got a bipartisan effort. And anytime you get a a, a bipartisan effort, you got power. You can't go over here and tell them I don't like it. You can't tell them I don't like it because we are together on this. This needs to be changed. And so when I look at them, I'm thinking about the church. We'll never get nothing accomplished unless we come together. Except we love love each other and say, I support you. And if the word of God is being preached, everybody should amen it. Yes. Everybody should be saying, thank you, God. Everybody can say amen. But you always got somebody who the word hit real bad and they say, mm. You know it hit them. Because before that, they was just amen and amen and then amen and the thing. And then all of a sudden, they say, mm-hmm. I would advise you in here not to amen too loud because I'm probably coming to you. I'm probably coming to you. And so the word somehow comes down on the street where you live. And it begins to deal with you. Not your uncle, not your auntie, not your mama, your dad, you. We love for to say, well, so-and-so really needed that message. You needed that message. That's why you're here today. That's why you're here. So... Let's say Sister Rose comes in and she says something that ain't right, which ain't going to happen. And somebody says, well, I, don't, I, I agree with her on whatever she says. No, agree with me if I'm right. Don't agree with me if I'm wrong. Don't agree with me if I'm saying something I shouldn't be saying. Don't agree with me. I get up this morning, come talking to a bunch of crap. You think, my God, you don't have to amen junk. Amen means I'm in agreement with you. I agree with what's going on. But in the meantime, let us work together. Paul said in the body of Christ, we ought to all speak the same thing. That makes us us one. 
All of us say the same thing, what the Word says, what the Word says, what the Word says. Because we didn't write it. It was already here for me, here for you. Look, just amen if it's right. It, you may not, it may hit you, it may strip you down to nothing, but say amen if it's right. Yes. They said she saw a man that came to this church some years ago, he and his wife, and he kept walking around the store till he finally, finally, he said, hey, Sister Daisy. And they said, hi, do I know you? Yeah, I used to come to the church years ago. He said, I'm going to tell you why I left. Sister Rose is too straight. I just can't deal with it. I mean, man, she don't give you a break nowhere. She is too straight. But she told me some truth. She said I was a whole monger. She was right. I was right, but I can't take that. I don't want that. I can't even remember this man. He said, I prayed for him. He had a kidney disease, and God healed him of it. And he said, I got it back now. I guess you do. Yes. So he goes, oh, no, we come to that church, and wow. Ah, she preaches good. She tells it like it is. Well, there ain't no other way to tell it. The word is what it is. We can't fix it. We can't change it. It is what it is. So let us not be alarmed that truth finds you. If you go, so be it. You're going with truth. See, you got to have it. You got to have it. So in the church, if we don't work together, everything gets uptight. Everything goes the wrong way. People don't love each other. They're looking at each other funny in the service. They talked about you on the phone. They don't went and talked about the preacher, talked about the wife or the husband. All this stuff goes on in churches every day. I went to Pentecostal Church of God of America in, in Oklahoma. It's an all-white organization. I was only black there for a while. And some of the sisters invited me over to, over to the house for, for food after, after church. And I said, okay, I'll go. <clears throat> I went over. Honey, I thought, what have I gotten myself into? They were talking about the pastor so bad, talking about his wife. I was saying, I shouldn't be in here. And I'm sitting there, I'm listening to this stuff, I'm thinking, oh, and as if I try to say something in, in the passage of defense, oh, Sister Rose, you just don't know, you knew here. I don't think that's right. The whole conversation was what he didn't do, what he should have done, what his wife did, what she shouldn't have done, or the whole conversation. I thought, when I get out of here, I told myself, I'm going to have to go, and I thought, I will not be back. Because if you don't like the pastor, leave. If you don't approve of what he or she is saying, leave. Nobody's making you sit on this pew. But to think you can sit up and talk about somebody and run them down, and that's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. So when I look at that, I'm thinking, God, how much, as my grandma used to call backbiting, and the word also uses it, why are they backbiting each other? Paul said, take heed, lest you be devoured and destroyed. Uh, all of y'all destroy each other. Let me take heed to what I'm saying. We should never love one person in this church more than we do the other one. If you look across this building today, you shouldn't love one person more than you do the other one. Everybody's exactly the same. But that don't happen when you get little picks. You get little clicks in the church. And I've seen it with my own eyes. They look over and check the one that they're real close with. And then when they get out, they say, <laughs> I don't agree with that. I mean, I don't mean no harm. Yes, you do. I want you to pray with me about this. Here's some gossip. No, it ain't about praying. It's about let me pass on a little gossip. I don't care whether you pray or not, but that's a good way to introduce it, to kind of cover up what you're doing. So I say, um, honey, help me pray for sister so-and-so. I just got to tell you what happened. I don't, oh, it's so sad. It was, and this, this thing right here going to kill some people. We spend more time, uh-huh, that's the truth, child. I thought the same thing. Yeah, that's right. Honey, mm -mm, I said that ain't for me. She can say anything she want to say. Baby, I know I got God in my heart and in my life. Well, why are you try having to defend it to somebody? If the word finds you where you are, deal with it. Don't get mad at me. I'm the messenger. God sent the word. He's in heaven, and he told me to take, take the heat for it. Go ahead and tell it. 
You're going to take the heat. It's my word, but when you deliver it, you're going to be, you're going to be judged for it. See, in everything that we do as spiritual leaders, no doubt we are responsible for what we say, how we live our lives from day to day. We are responsible. That we don't cause people to stumble along the way. And we got a lot of preachers that's doing that today. They profess one thing, they do another. It doesn't amount to very much. But when you come from this pulpit or any pulpit in this country, you need to come knowing that you're living right, doing it right, saying it right, the way God wants you to do it, and not be concerned about whether or not somebody's going to approve or disapprove. It's not important, not important. See, bipartisan is, is when both sides come together and say, okay, let's work, let's work this. It's okay. Now, what made me sick, check this out. With this election, all, everybody knows that Donald Trump is a disaster waiting to happen. Everybody knows it. His, everything that shows that this man could, cannot be in that office was as plain as the nose on our face. But you know what they said? I'm still going to vote for him. But if you know, if you're concerned about us, the country, you got to say, no, we cannot allow this to happen because this is going to hurt the country. It's not about you. It's about them. Because everyone wants to say, I'm a Republican. We won. We back in office. We don't care if a bull, if a bulldog is sitting up there, at least we back in office. You should be thinking about the welfare of this nation, of the people that's in this country. Yes. Definitely should. I don't deal much with politics, but this, this message gives us a great comparison of what's going on in the church world as a whole. They said, well, I think you should just stay away from politics and religion. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. I just think she stepped over the line a bit. Go ahead. Think I stepped over the line? Who? If you think I'm over the line, keep sitting. I'm going all the way across the line. Yes. See, when you're a preacher... You have the view of every person in the pew. And I look over here, and everybody's saying amen. I get over here by halfway, and there's... I move a little further, and you'll find, for the most part, most people say amen. But there's always one like this. And he always just one, it's several. Ask me, do I care? You get over here, you can tell when people agree with you. I can tell if they're lying or they're telling the truth. So I start preaching, I look over at this section, and you can tell, like, wow, that's true. That's true. Look a little further, you got a mixture. I agree with you. I don't think you ought to even be talking about this as a pastor. Yes, I am. See, I don't have to answer to you. I only answer to God. And one thing you got to do when you preach the gospel, you don't worry, all kind of looks are in the audience. Some like you, some can't stand you, some hope you're sharp and sit down. And if the Lord had fixed us where our thoughts would come out over our head and people would see what we were thinking, God help us all. Yes. But you got to do what you got to do. This is, not black or, this is not black or white. This is right and wrong. There's a difference. When you start judging people on what, on what color they are, you got a problem. That's a division. We got all these things going on in the country. Wonder what's going on. Oh, we're so divided that you just find that out. It's been going on forever. Jesus said when he got ready to go back to heaven, the prayer he prayed, he said, Father, make Make them one. Make the people of God one as you and I are one. Make them one. You'll be surprised at what you could get accomplished when you work together in unity. Because we are workers together with God. We should be workers together with each other. 
We get a lot accomplished. You can do things in this church, and I tell you, <laughs> from the time the church started back in 81, you could, we always worked together. We accomplished everything we set out to do. When we had to make a move, we worked together. Because it wasn't what you call a big, a big bank account to do it, so we had to work together. And when we had to move again up here, we had to work together. That's how we get it accomplished. How do we get all this stuff paid for? We work together. That's why everybody should do their part because everybody's working as a, as a whole. We're trying to solve this thing. So we came in this church and we had to pay money to have this building built out and, and uh, most of our, our, our instruments were already paid for and, and, uh, but some things we had to pay for and have done and what have you and we worked together. When I, somebody came to this church and said, uh, you had to give $1,000. No, you didn't. We asked for $1,000 one time. One time we asked for $1,000. And that was with everything we had to do in here, every member, if you give $1,000, we can come together as one, get it done. And rest assured, if I asked you for 1000 mine was probably 10 right. yes. yes. And these And the church people here, they know that. Sister Rose ain't asked nothing that she's not doing. No. I don't ask you to give while I sit back on my purse and do nothing. It doesn't happen. Everything we have in this church, I lead out in it. Whether it be fasting and praying, seeking God, I am the leader. Yes. But we could have never done what we done had we not worked together. The pews you sitting on, nice cushions under your tush, that was we had to work together. And I said, well, I'll pay for the pews. We pulled it off. There's other things in this church. Well, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. But then sometimes I say, we all going to do this one. Yes, we all going to do it. Yes. Because some folks, have you noticed some people, if you'll do everything, they'll let you do it. But you got to be saying, is there anything I can do? You don't hear that much. They're scared you're going to say, yes, it is. There's something you can do. They don't, they don't want to hear that, so they don't ask. Is there anything else that needs to be done, Sister Rose? I rarely get that. Yeah, every now and then. <laughs> Somebody will say, you think uh, I could do something, Sister Rose? Is there anything that I can do? Because I'm afraid the answer is going to be, yes, it is. But you know what? We all at different levels, so we all have to do what we can do. What I can do and what you can do may not be the same. Mine may be greater, yours may be less, but if we pull it together, we make things work. We make it work. So look at the, at the fact that uh, the condition of our country is, and nothing hardly gets accomplished in Washington because nobody is together. That, you know, I, I'm with you if you're Republican. I'm with you if you're Democrat. But come on, if you say forget Republican or Democrat, let's just work this for the, that ain't never going to happen in this life. Neither the life to come. It ain't happening. See, because I don't want that. We got to be a bunch. What is, what is the joy that division is giving these people? Why do you have a different name from mine? You know, if I have, me and my husband have children, they all will have the same name. If they don't have the same name, then something is wrong. I asked a question one day. Our family was very private about business in the family. You just don't, whatever the little nasty stuff in the family going on, you just keep quiet, don't talk about it. So my grandmother's brother, he was, we called him Uncle Dan. But uh, his name, last name, was different from all of theirs. And I'm just, I'm curious. I don't even know what's going on. So I sat down with that thought. I wonder why in my grandmother's family that her brother don't have the same name that all the rest of them got. Now, that's a common question for a kid. I kept trying to figure it out. Because all of us, all of us were Liddells, all of us. All of my kids are Banks. So I went and said to my grandmother, I said, come on. Why has Uncle Dan got a different name than, than y'all? You should not have done that. And I 
I'm just a curious kid. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't understand it because everybody I know, they got the same mom and dad. They got the same name. And my grandmother said, you ask a fool question like that again. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was a fool question. I'm, I'm as innocent as I can be. Well, how does this happen? Don't you ever. Don't you ever ask such a fool thing again about what the name is different. Well, tell me how that happened. All I want to know is how it happened. What's wrong? I'm a kid here. I pondered that and pondered it until one day as I got older, I thought, oh, he's, he come from a different species here. <laughs> now I got it. He's different. Yes. Check this out. Have you ever seen somebody tell you, uh, this is my sister or this is my, my dad and what have you, and everybody looks like the dad or the mom over here, but somewhere up here, where did you come from? <laughs> uh, my, my mother had a son named Robert. Robert was born almost white. He had red freckles all over his face and bright red hair. Not another person in our family had no freckles, had none of that stuff. So when he's born, my, 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 my daddy, he was over the top anyway. He said, where'd that little so-and-so come from? <laughs> was, he said, do you see uh, any freckles on me? Have you seen any of these other kids with red hair? Where did he come from? Somewhere, somehow, he came from way back down there, but he is your kid. It's, and, and this is common among the black race. You'll have somebody that just is almost white. You see another one, jet black. You'll think, how does that happen? We don't understand it, but we know it does happen. But you wonder. So my dad said, what? I don't, he never claimed it. And that's not my kid. I know for sure of that. Because we're supposed to look like each other. So, understand. We're supposed to act like all the Bankses do. We act like the Liddells. We were all crazy. You met one crazy Liddell, you met them all. We... We're short-tempered in a heartbeat. Whew. I mean, you could, we could be grinning one minute, the next minute. <laughs> but you know what? We have got to get together as a church and become the family of God that work together, that's united with each other. We treat everybody the same. No matter who they are, no matter where they came from, whether they're rich or poor, we treat everybody the same. Understand that. I'm not concerned about that. You know, it's amazing how divided the church is with people who got money, people that don't have money, people that uh, uh, don't have, um, don't dress the way we dress, don't speak the way we speak. Nothing is worse than you to make fun of a person because they don't pronounce a word the way you pronounce it. Nothing is worse than that. You have to be a low person to do that to anybody. But we find this in the church on a constant, saying things we ought not say, treating you funny, looking at you funny. I don't, I don't know about her. I'm not supposed to look like you. I am supposed to love you. And you're supposed to love me back. And we're all different. You look at every person in this room, ain't none of us in here look alike, but we are a family. We are a family. What po politics is, the whole thing that makes Washington turn. If you ain't political, I listened to Booker when he, he was on the short list for vice president with Clinton. And that man asked him a question. That man went around that question so many times, you come back and ask him again. Went around it again. Ask him again went around it. I said, answer the question. <laughs> I told you everything else. 
you ask him who he is or what's going on, he'll tell you where he's going. You say, I want to know where you've been. They'll tell you where they're going. <laughs> what's wrong with that? They become what politics do. It makes you an unbelievable liar. It makes you a hypocrite. It makes you two-faced and can't be trusted. It means what you say to me today may not apply tomorrow. It's this strange type of thing that makes this division so deep into our society. All because we're a bunch of liars and crooks. One lady said, I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton because she's just too much of a liar. I said, did you, did you miss Donald Trump? Did you miss him? He lied consistently. One reporter called him a serial liar. <laughs> True. A serial liar. He lies so much. How did you miss that? And the political structure is so corrupt. No wonder our nation is in the condition that it is. No wonder our churches are the way they are because the preachers are, are, are corrupt. They're no good. They're liars. They're hypocrites. They say one thing in the pulpit, do something else when they get home. All this stuff affects right in the church. Think about it. It's awful. And so we go to church. We, we like to say, okay, that's where I'm going to get truth at. Not necessarily. Because we are not comfortable with truth. We would rather it be that just tell me something different. Don't tell me that. You know, women like to hear, me, like to hear a man say, baby, you are fine. And you look in your mirror and you know that's a lie. <laughs> you know that's a lie. But you know what? They want to hear that. That's amazing to me. I'm thinking, look at yourself. You know what the truth is. The mirror tells you. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who am I? Don't get caught up in what somebody's saying. Oh, everything about you is beautiful. You're the one who see yourself naked. Oh, no. It ain't quite that way. Be honest with yourself. Quit buying into lies. That's how these men blow these women's minds. They tell them, baby, you are everything I ever dreamed of. He's a liar. You're what I've been looking for. He's a liar. You're as fine as they, as they get, baby, and you fat as you can get. You are, that's not true. But we'd rather for them to tell us that because that makes us feel good. Please give me a break. Don't believe what he says. He's a liar. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into the preacher that tells you from the pulpit you're okay and you know you're committing sin every day. Don't buy into it. Don't allow yourself to go down that path as if everything is okay. Well, the preacher told me this morning, he prophesied, they prophesy lies. Not true. Look at it. I was in a tent meeting in, in the state of, in, in, uh, in Tacoma, and this preacher calls this woman out. He says, uh, prophesied all these great things over this woman. We all know her. What's in that saying? Did you hear that? And he just kept prophesying one lie after another lie after another lie. After. We all looking at each other. God couldn't have gave you that because that ain't that woman. These preachers prophesy lies across the TV every day. You send me this amount of money and God's going to bless you to, be, to find that four times more than what you gave me. And you still be looking for it years later. Then they're mad at God. Don't get mad with God. He didn't lie. He's not man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Come on, these preachers tell you also, and they buy it. Think about it. You ain't living nothing, ain't doing nothing right, but God's getting ready to bless you. Well, there ain't no reason for none of us to straighten out. Just stay crooked. Blessing come with everything. No, it doesn't. Think about it. If you're in a church, it's all of you that are here this, this morning, not our members, but uh, if you're in a church and a preacher standing in that pulpit telling you something the Bible says and you know it's not true, do not amen it, and you better get out of there. You better get out. Find a place where they speak truth. It may cut you at the feet all the way up, but take it. It will change your whole life. Yes. So then we get to the point where we are doing and saying things that are politically correct. So I don't offend, that means don't offend anybody. That means just watch what you say. 
deal with things very easy. And you know, when I looked up that word, a politically correct, it says conforming to a belief that language and practices which could offend political sensibility as in matters of sex or race. So eliminate that. They say Obama did not like to deal with racial issues. But come on. You, you got to deal with it if nobody. Because you're black like us. And I believe that's why a lot of black people didn't, a lot of people fell off and didn't come out. Because they're thinking, okay, when Obama could have done something more. Now, now granted, that Congress gave him a, a bad time on everything he tried to do. And I give him that. But understand, if you black like me, when something ain't right, I need you to change it. The first time he spoke out against a situation was when the man, uh, when they came to arrest him in his own house, uh, and, and he's in his living room saying, this is my house. They arrested him in his own house. Obama came out and said, well, wouldn't you feel bad if you were standing in your living room and somebody arrested you in your own house and you got your ID to show for that I live here? They made him take it back. He took it back and had a, and had a beer summit. I would have said, I ain't summoned with nobody. If right is right. You wouldn't want somebody to come and arrest you in your living room when you have proof that this is your living room. So I'm just going to arrest you anyway. And it's okay. Don't say nothing about it because it's a race issue. It's a race issue. We have that in this country. We've been running around this big white elephant for years acting like it don't exist. This big white uh, elephant is all over our society. You can't keep walking past it. You're going to eventually have to deal with it. We are dealing with it right now, even more so. I mean, the people that are protesting and saying, he's not my president. Uh, uh, He's not about love. He's about hate. And they're going through all this stuff all over the country. We never had this with an election. And how did we get it? By the candidate's own words. That's the way he felt. He discriminated against blacks to even live in some of his, his uh, properties. He wanted the, uh, the, uh, the Central Park Five, he wanted them killed, electrocuted. But you know what? That ain't changed. So we waiting for the real Donald Trump. You've been seeing him. Look up. The real person is what you see. Don't, uh, don't second guess me. It is what you see. So who are you waiting on? Everything we need to know about him, we know. He put it out there. See? So listen to this. Politics is the primarily an interest in oneself. But well, long as my interest is about me, I do nothing for you. The church is the same way. If I don't preach the gospel to you and expect you to live right and do it right, Something is wrong with that. See, you cannot do that. So if I'm political, I'm not going to have your interests at heart. If I come to the pulpit and I'm, I'm, I'm partial in my feeling toward anybody, I can't help you. If I go out and commit sin and, 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 and do something that's deadly wrong and come back to the church, I can't help you. I got to be an example. I got to lead that way. I got to do it. I looked at uh, Trump when he, made, he, he had the meeting with Obama and they were sitting there together. That man was scared to the inch of his life. He sitting there like this. He was like, what have I got myself into? He was about winning, not being president. I just want to win for, for everybody who said I couldn't. I made my point, but hey, when you made this point on the end of that, you can't even begin to comprehend it. You ain't going to have no life anymore such as you've known it. And I think of all the money that's being spent. They got to block off air, uh, airspace uh, over Trump Tower. They got to be sure planes don't come in that, in that area because cause he's the president. And then um, they got uh, a New York police and Secret Service around Trump Tower 24 hours a day. Now you already got to, fo- to follow him. And who knows who would try to take him out? And so you got all these people that's got and spending money to keep him up here. He hasn't begun to see it. 
I guarantee you, everybody that's been in that house tell you the day I got out, it was the best day of my life. I laughed at Michelle Obama. She went to a school and was talking to children one day. And they said to her, Miss, Miss Obama, how is it being in the White House? She said, like a prison. And she realized, she, they coming back to get me on that one. She said, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so no, no, you're not. It is like a prison. You know, somebody's over you all the time, every day. Take a picture of you every day. Don't sneeze. They tell how many times you sneeze. If you fell down, you fell on your right side and hit the left and you done this. It's a whole story. Oh, my God. I feel for any person to have to live under that type of scrutiny every day. You're taking trips that you don't feel like taking. You're talking to people you don't feel like talking to. You're doing all kinds of stuff because every word, I heard somebody say it the other day, you have put your into a place where every word you speak is under scrutiny. How you looked, they zoom in on this. Right up here. You see that look, didn't you? What you think? Everybody's second guessing you. It's unbelievable. But you know, you come to church, the only scrutiny you're going to be under here is what the Word of God is telling you. You need to get right. You need to get right. Make it right. Get it together. We're trying to help you to get to heaven. Not about this life, to get to heaven. And if you're going to heaven, let me tell you, there's a lot you better learn before you leave this world. Otherwise, you won't be going. Think about it. My job is to be sure that every person that crosses my path, be sure, Rose, that you have said the truth. Be sure they have gotten what they need. If they died tomorrow, they couldn't say, I didn't know. Not tomorrow. No matter what happens. Be sure you tell them. Because if I don't tell you, if I don't get it across to you, I'm in trouble. That's why I'm going to get it across. Right. I could go to hell just for not telling you the truth. Oh, no. I ain't going to hell for nothing. I'm sure not going because I didn't tell you the truth. That's why I don't, I don't care how you look. Go ahead. Being political has a shrewdness to it. It's trickery. It's to make you believe this when it's really this. I tell you this, but I really mean this. That's why they that's why they don't give they don't give direct answers. They talk in circles. Church people talk in circles. You say, hey, I need to talk to you about something. So did you do such and such a thing? Me? I said, well, just me and you in the room, I would think I'm talking to you. He said, I have never heard it more in my life than I've heard it that people talk in circles to keep from giving you a direct answer. How you feel today? You okay? Oh, yeah. And inside there's a raving storm going on inside. You ain't okay. Phony grin. <laughs> My daughter, I don't know when I see her with a, a real grin because she, she, she went through a lot. <laughs> this is what she do people when she's new. <laughs> I said, Nisi, it's not for real. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear it or nothing. And she has done that so long, the only person she's comfortable with laughing with and letting go is the family. Because we have had our share of enemies, believe me. And it, it probably affected her more than anybody in the family. Don't trust nobody. She said, remember one thing, you don't trust anybody but mama. Nobody. Because she's seen me backstabbed and betrayed and, and lied on and all this stuff. And she's standing there watching all this stuff. How do they do this? to mama because they know who I am how did you do that to my mother all I said is you pray when you leave this world you have nothing in your heart against anybody regardless of what they did to me or to the family you got to love them anyway you'll get past it 
I don't know uh, one person that I dislike or hate, not one. And boy, have I got some humdingers of enemies in this town. Boy, Sister Rose's name come up. Oh, my God, that's a, it's a movie. <laughs> it's a short story. It's a documentary. It, whoa, ho. <laughs> we got a few new people here that said, I don't need you to tell me about Sister Rose. I'm going to the church. I can find out for myself. I can appreciate that. Don't tell me about anybody. Give me a chance to find out for myself. I'm not that stupid. You got to school me in on what's going. The people that are telling you bad about the church is because they either was once here or they was never here. And the ones that was once here didn't like what I was saying when they came in the door. Leave. It don't take long for you to find out who I am. You say, honey, I ain't going to that church. That woman don't give nobody a, a break. I give everybody breaks within the word. Amen. Within the word. But because people don't tell people the truth no more, they think that's a problem. You know, you don't, mm-mm. I had people get so mad with me. They love me to pieces. Come to this church, oh, Sister Rose, it's so nice. <laughs> that smile, oh, she has the most beautiful smile. <laughs> but it doesn't take long before I, I just, I don't agree. You don't have to. I just got to do my job. It's okay. Quit walking around looking at me funny because I'll just pull you to the side and say, there's something wrong, baby. The word bother you this morning? Swallow it. You know, when I used to give my babies medicine, the word ain't nothing but medicine for people. I used to give my babies medicine, and they didn't want to take it. They kept, mm, mm, mm. Uh, you know how I got them to swallow it? Blow in their face, and you blow in their face. They said, <laughs> now, now you got to, you got to swallow it. Because now your mouth is open. That same way here, what I give you, if you don't like it, say, Lord, you know what? Let me get mad with that woman because she knows what she's talking about. What she said was true. Were you on that street? Yeah, I was on that street, but hey, hey, get mad. This tells you who you are. This is not Sister Rose's book. Happens to be my Bible. And I study it consistently, and you are in here. Don't get mad with me. I'm going to call it with the word said. What are you? A liar? A homonger? Full of envy and strife? Full of jealousy? I don't, I don't agree with any of those things about me. You might as well take it. It ain't going to leave. See, look in the mirror. This is the mirror. Look in the mirror of this book. When you look in here, it will never tell you you're better than what you are. It will never lie to you. It will always tell you the truth. And by, by knowing the truth, you shall be free. That's why a lot of people ain't free today. Nobody ever told them the truth. You've got to get the truth to be free. I took it for who I was. I didn't lie about it. I was mean. I, I wasn't saved. I wasn't a Christian. I, I was what, what devils are like. That was my dad. It was the devil. So I, you can't expect me to act like I'm a Christian. I was not one. Christians don't use profanity. Christians don't talk about other people behind their backs. Christians love. Christians care. Christians don't beat up people. Wake up Larry McGee. They don't do that. He gonna sleep right on off in the hell one day. Watch and see. That's a fact. Say, who is that? Don't worry about it. He knows who he is. But it's the truth. Stop for a minute. And say, you know what? Whatever truth comes, whether I like it or not, I'm going to take it. Because that's going to set me free and make me a better person. See, don't be political. Don't say all the right things that's correct. Say, no, this is what it is. You know what, you ever, just people all over this building this morning, uh, if, I don't want you to call me, but if, if, it, if it was so, they could call me on the phone. I said, I said, Sister Rose, everything you ever said about me was the truth. Amen. It was ugly. It wasn't what I liked. Give us a president that just tells us the truth. 
Not one who says what's politically correct, that doesn't work. Tell me what is truth. And then I apply it to my own life and I become a new person. Then I don't do any of these things and I don't become political. Don't become political. And this is so evident. We had a man in this church one time. He was so political. I said to him one day, I said, gosh, you're political. Just a lying crook. There ain't no other name for you. It's a fact. I see, we got people who know something ain't right, but they won't tell you that it ain't. They know it's not. But I didn't want to, honey, I don't want to be, you know, upsetting people. I do it every Sunday and during the week. If I didn't get you on Sunday, I'll probably catch you Wednesday or Friday or maybe Saturday or maybe phone call. Deal with it. He said, so did she ask you, what did you think about this and what did you say? Well, to be truthful, I really didn't know what to say. And I'm thinking, oh, what's complicated? Are you ugly? Are you pretty? Are you saved? Are you not? Whatever it is, say it. It is better for you to tell people the truth than to lie to them. They may not like it at first, but they will get better if they take it. Don't be one of these people who just yes about everybody. Oh, no, I think you're fine. Just forget what everybody else is saying. And then go over and say, honey, she need to do something about that dress. Oh, and that hairdo is, is, is way over the top. You know, she did so, so. Tell me. I tell my children that. They tell me. We talk open to each other. I said, Wanda, where did you get that peculiar dress you got on? She said, Mama, I didn't buy this dress for you. I said, I know, but where did you get it? It's still peculiar. And she'll tell me I put on something. Mama, you bought that? Yes. I never would have thought you'd have bought that. I said, I'm getting older. I changed. <laughs> <But> some things <laughs> I'm wearing now, uh, I went to war when I was younger. But now I'm older. Let me go ahead and act like I didn't just walk around here like a, as my grandma said, a strumpet with, with, <laughs> with, <laughs> with dyed hair, a mini dress and a low, low dress cut to show the, show the wrinkles. <laughs> it's true. When you get your age, act your age. Dress your age. And you want to welcome somebody and say, how you think I look, honey? You look like a young strumpet. Change that. <laughs> you want to look like a, 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 I want to look like a preacher. You don't come in here and find me plunging and upping and out and down and all this stuff. Come on. I'm a preacher. I'm a woman preacher. Should I not carry myself as such? Or you come in here looking like a trick and everybody in the audience is thinking, wow. You, you wouldn't dare uh, peg me to be a preacher. I come in here looking like that. You say, that's the pastor? You think, wow. Let's speak truth to each other or else we are political. That's all we are, a bunch of political people lying to each other, including yourself. Right. Donald Trump said you will never find a more humble person than him. <laughs> I'm trying to get that one to now. That's pride, in, that's pride in the way I've never seen it. So do you ask God to forgive me? I really don't have to ask God to forgive me because I don't do things like that. Really? Wow. Horrific liar. We all need to acknowledge where we are and who we are. So take this morning. Don't let no preacher tell you a bunch of lies. A lot of them will do it as long as you give them money. I don't care if you give me any. I'm going to tell you the truth while the money's in my hand or whether it's out of it. Sit so down to the table with me, eat my chicken while you swallow, and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> Put it on the line. Say what's right. You know what? I'm going to say this and I'm getting ready to close. The thing that got the attention of the American people in this election was the fact that Donald Trump said everything that other people were thinking about. It's the truth. They said, oh, my God, he didn't say that, did he? Well, well you wanted to say it, but you didn't have the guts to say it. He talked about everybody. Everyone around here calling people pretty. That woman's not pretty. She's ugly. 
And everybody looked like this. And Jeb Bush says, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to get to the White House insulting people all the way everywhere you go you'll never get there and he had to call and congratulate him <laughs> now congratulating you you get praise when you do something right come on musicians you get praise when you do something good not just for just to do it because if you felt that way yesterday you feel that way today right. See, think about it while our musicians and singers are coming forward I want you to take a look. Do you want to be in a church where everything is kept above board? You're in a good place. You're in a good place. I have no pics. They'll tell you that. I have no pets. No. Here it is. My family, your family, don't matter. This church will tell you, Sister Rose will treat her family and tell them the truth just like she tells you and don't take no stuff. Yeah, when my son sinned and done wrong, one was my assistant pastor. I thought you filthy piece of nothing. You got to up and get out of here. I will never share a pulpit with another preacher that don't live right. I haven't put a sister in since. Me and Jesus... I mean, he's the main preacher. I assist him. Careful. That's right. See? But you know what? We got to do it right straight across the board. It don't matter who it is. Truth is truth. No matter who it is. So I'm going to take it. Because you can appreciate a pastor whose family is said, well, you don't bother that. That's the pastor's family. You don't say that. Oh, yeah, we say it to the pastor's family. You're not going to do it. You're going to do the same thing that applies to me, applies to you. Vice versa. That's what truth is. I love you. I'm glad that you're here this morning. You've been a good audience. I didn't see that many faces that look funny. Because <laughs> I kept saying, what did I say? But, but for the most part, I think they're kind of liking me because it's an election year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you the truth. If you get the truth from somebody, you'll get to heaven. If you never get it, you'll never get there. God bless you. Love you a whole bunch. Would you stand to your feet? Our singers and musicians are going to bring a song. And if you want prayer this morning, why don't you come forward and let me pray for you? Yes. Yes.